Good afternoon. Everyone's probably been sitting here for a long time, huh? Um, I just got here this afternoon, so I'm my mind somewhere over Iowa. But a few things. Everyone here, I was told, is real bright. Is that true? <laughs> Plus, I want to meet Eric later on. Which one's Eric? Oh, hi, Eric. How you doing? Um, and. Uh, a lot of stuff here is rags to riches. I was listening back there. Sort of want to be careful about that because um, there's a lot of people that have been real successful in other terms that aren't here because maybe they didn't make a lot of money that you want to listen to very carefully. And one of the things that, that tends to run through some of the things that people here have talked about is uh, innovation and creativity. And if you're really bright, have you ever thought about what it is to be intelligent? Probably some of you have, right? Because you meet your friend and he's pretty dumb and maybe you think you're smarter and you wonder what the difference is. <laughs> and and I, I've thought about this a little bit myself. And, and one of the things is, it seems to me a lot, of it's the, a lot of it's memory, but a lot of it's the ability to sort of zoom out like you're in a city and you could look at the whole thing from about the 80th floor down at the city and while other people are trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B reading these stupid little maps you can just see it all out in front of you you can see the whole thing and you can make connections that just seem obvious because you can see the whole thing that's why bright people feel guilty a lot because they come up with stuff that they just say hey look at this and other people give them these dumb awards and they feel funny <laughs> um, But the key thing is that if you're going to make connections which are innovative, you, 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 to connect two experiences together, that you have to not have the same bag of experiences as everyone else does, or else you're going to make the same connections, and then you won't be innovative, and then nobody will give you an award. So what you've got to do <laughs> is get different experiences um, than, than the normal course of events. And one of the, the, the funny things about being bright is everyone puts you on this path. You know, to go to high school, go to college. I've heard about some kid that's 14 on his way to Stanford. And that's great. That's sort of out of the ordinary. Um, but you might want to think about going to Paris and being a poet for a few years, you know. Or you might want to go to a third world country. I'd highly advise that. And see people and lepers with their hands falling off and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's very much so worth doing. Um, you know, fall in love with two people at once. You know? you... Walt Disney took LSD. Do you know that? He did once. And that's where the idea for Fantasia came from. It's true. And you can go hear stories about all these people. And the key thing that comes through is that they had a variety of experiences which they could draw upon in order to try to solve a problem or attack a particular dilemma in a, in a kind of unique way. And so one of the things that you'll get a lot of pressure to do uh, is to go in one very clear direction and believe in God and all that other stuff. And that's great, but don't uh, ever walk by a Zen Buddhist because of that. Sit down and talk and buy him lunch. And <laughs> One of the, the things that, that I had um, um, in my mind growing up, I don't know how it got there, was, but that the world was sort of something that happened just outside your peepers. And you didn't, you didn't really try to change it, you just sort of tried to find your place in it and, and have the best life you could. And it would all just go on out there and there were some pretty bright people running it. And as you start to interact with some of these people, you find they're not a lot different than you. Um, the people actually making these decisions every day that are sort of running the world are, you, you know, are not really very much different than you. And they might have a little more uh, judgment in some areas, but basically they're the same. And once you realize that, you start to feel you have a responsibility to do something about it because the world's in, in pretty bad shape right now. And uh, I guess one of the things that motivates a lot of people that I've seen that, that actually get out and do something in, in any different field is that we all sort of uh, you know, eat food that other people cook and wear clothing that other people make and speak a language that other people evolved and use someone else's mathematics. And, and we're sort of taking from this giant pool constantly. And the, the most ecstatic thing in the whole world is actually put something back into that pool. 
and I think people from all the fields that maybe you've heard from here and, and a whole bunch that you haven't would express the same sort of feeling. It's the most ecstatic thing that I've encountered. So I would highly recommend it. Um, and one of the major areas, I know probably with all this stuff, I might not be invited back here next year, so I'll say it now. The, <laughs> when you pass a, a certain age, I don't know what it is, 25, 30 years old, uh, you sort of as a human being inherit the responsibility of being a guardian of the earth for future generations of which you are all a member uh, to inherit. And I'm not exactly sure what that means, but just obviously that's the case. And I think our particular, uh, our particular, this particular generation of people that is your guardian is doing an extremely poor job in one area, and one area where all of the help that you all can muster is really necessary. And that is that the chances that this planet's going to remain in one piece through your natural lifetimes is not extremely high right now. And it's fairly dismal. And uh, I anticipate having some kids one day and helping them grow up to be sane human beings. And you people are going to be the people that are running the planet when my kids grow up. So would you please pay attention to this problem and try to do something about it? Because I'd like to see my kids grow up and be able to come here and sit like you and listen to a bunch of funny people. Thank you.